St Mary's House of Welcome is an organisation that's been running for close to 50 years. It came out of a need when there was homeless sleeping in the exhibition gardens. So they realised that the need was getting greater and they looked around and found uh, a building, a vacant building in um, Brunswick Street, which is 165. It was run by the sisters and volunteers. Um, so it was run on a much smaller scale and it's slowly developed over the years and getting recurrent funding made a big difference to what we were able to offer. The deal is, when you've finished lunch, unless you've got a walking frame or you're otherwise difficultly walking out, you walk down here and you will get the bag of fruit. So God bless, stay safe. I mean, take it away. When I first came to St Mary's in 2001, I was, um, I was a social worker here. For the first year it was a great struggle for me to come from the country to the city and then have to deal with such in-your-face kind of issues on a daily basis. And I've, I found it very difficult to make the transition. I struggled in my first year, but now that I've been here seven years, I'm certainly not blasé because you can't be blasé with our client base. But I'm far more accepting and open and probably now that I know the stories of so many people, um, you can't help but be compassionate about the work that's done here. We have over 120 volunteers on our books and they're essential. We can't run them without the volunteers. And if you actually then look at that as actual paid hours, agencies such as ours, through volunteers, we just, just couldn't run it, because you're looking at over a quarter of a million dollars a month, especially six days a week. You can't afford to do that. Volunteers are the backbone of most non-government agencies. I love working here. Yeah, I get so much enjoyment from the clients. You know, they give you so much, and you get to meet all kinds of people. Most of them are really beautiful people, really are. No, so, yeah. And I hope I'm doing it for another 20 or so years. <laughs> Volunteering, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I get more out of it than the clients do, actually. I love it. I can't wait to get in here normally. Yeah. Well, like, I know a lot of different people, you know, who have come from different backgrounds. They come to St Mary's, they feel at home, and they've got a place, you know, where... It's their home away from home because for a lot of people this is the only place they know, you know, like apart from Street Life and different organisations that we run here, a lot of people you see really, if it wasn't for a place like St Mary's, they wouldn't have an affiliation. How's that? Uh, I keep doing that. That's what's called the House of Welcome, you know, anyone is welcome. There is no denomination, no creed. Come as you are, that's you know, St Mary's motto and that's the way it should be. The site at 165, 169 Brunswick Street's probably been past its use by date for a considerable number of years. One of the reasons for us really looking at developing the new facility was actually we couldn't provide the services that were being requested and we were limited in what we could with the structure that we had. See the bricks different there, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, it is. This used to be our community room here, and I had my the staff officers were here. We're focusing specifically on being able to all people to be able to access. We're putting a whole community element in the training and facilities that have been designed. So, like we've got two training areas. We've got a training kitchen coming in. We'll have. We already have outside groups come in and use our agency for meetings and AGMs. But they're actually going to have to stabilise the wall, yes. then remove the bottom and take the wood out because the wood won't last right, and put yeah. brickwork in yeah. and re-stabilise it. We'd already raised in excess of a million when we were successful enough to get two and a half million from the federal government. Obviously we are hoping 
um, to receive a considerable donation from the state government. So we're actually a million short of the target for the building. I'm glad that they're doing the um, new building because there'll be more people that will be able to come in and we'll be able to help more people with food and, and yeah, there's going to be places where they can, you know, like play pool, watch TV and do other kinds of things there. Where the old place, they only had the one room. Here, where that pile of dirt is, goes the sort of kitchen, dining room, which will go out to the open space. So that'll be open space. O like open space, like a courtyard, which oh, will all be on top of that, because yeah. you see that's all underground. Yeah. So you've actually got a lot of space when you actually look at it. And then that will open up into the activities. On May 17th, we've got a tin shake for the Richmond Geelong game. And this is our second year of tin shaking at the, at the G. So um, we get a couple of hours shaking tins before the game. It can be a really hard slog, because Shaking tins is <laughs> a bit of a challenge. But part of that is I get to speak at the president's function. So there can be between three to 500 people at that function who don't know us. So it's yet another way of us raising awareness and hopefully getting some donations. So it's, it's that million dollar shortfall, but I feel reasonably confident that we will get something.